for those of you that know me, I am a big fan of working smarter and making one, everyone's life a little bit easier. So that's why I want to chat quickly about iService. It's the UK's first dental specific asset management service. And it's absolutely brilliant because as I mentioned, I'm a fan of working smarter. So it's for all of your equipment and everything that you have within your practice. You're able to see all of the certificates, for example, your pressure vessel inspections, your servicing, you get reminders for when you need to service an item. If there is a fault with one of your pieces of equipment, you know, it's you can easily log it and communicate to the relevant person for it. And it's for both small practices and large practices, even corporates. So it's, you know, if it it's for basically everyone and there will be a little pop up at the bottom if you just want to go ahead and and book a demo for iService there. And sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice today a little bit. I think I caught a bit of a cold. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and chat to you about several different things regarding audits. So why auditing is so important, the key problems when carrying out audits, what the quality assurance workflow is, how you can successfully audit and what audits you should be carrying out because there is a lot of confusion around this area. So there is, audits can be a bit scary, let's be honest, especially if you're not aware how to do them or the guidance around it. So that's where I'm hoping to make it a little bit less scary for everyone. So basically here, I just wanna let you know that here at Agilio, we are serious about compliance and making your life easier. So historically, I comply practices are 10% ahead of non-I comply practices when it comes to passing inspections. And we can honestly say that in September and December, 100% um, of practices pass their inspections. And the reason I'm saying that today is because we also offer consultancy services and we can identify trends and errors and problems. So with our consultants who go out to practices, they do something called a health check. It's where they go out to a practice and identify any compliance gaps and everything there for you. And they've noticed that in at least 50% of practices, there have been you know, some problems with the audits where they've needed to repeat an audit. So that's why we're sort of here today is just to let you know that you're not alone. You know, audits can be quite scary, uh, but we're going to go ahead and eliminate that. Fr so why are audits so important? Auditing is a major part of the CQC's well-led key line of inquiry, and poor auditing processes are historically one of the top reasons you could fail an inspection. Even within CQC's new strategy, auditing is going to be right at the top with everything. So um, audits can also identify problem areas, and it also helps practices to continuously improve. The whole reason, as so I mentioned, the audits can identify problem areas. So basically, if you're not looking for specific things, it can, it can be basically be missed. So that's the whole point of the audit process, to identify these things, to continuously improve your practice and make your practice the best it can absolutely be. All right, so key problems with audits. Uh, basically, if a practice is going to fall down on the audit, these are going to be one of the reasons as to why misunderstanding of legal status or regulatory requirements. A good example of this one was with the updated guidance for the radiograph scoring. I'm not sure if anyone's aware or remembers when it got changed. So radiographs were scored as either a one, two or three but then they changed over to A for acceptable and N for not acceptable. And some practices or some people haven't necessarily updated, you know, their scoring in line with that. Um, misunderstanding of quality assurance workflow. So I actually have a whole slide on this and I'll be chatting about it a little bit more in detail a little bit further on. Lack of the subject knowledge and or competence. So sometimes, you know, if how, how are you supposed to know to do something if you don't know anything about that subject matter? So it's just finding out that knowledge and training yourself. If you have like a CPD provider, for example, for those of you that have iLearn, there are some great courses on there just to sort of, you know, understand the whole auditing process and everything. And then misunderstanding of the audit process and a lack of follow through. So, you know, somebody will go ahead and identify all those things on the audit, but the action just sits there. There's nothing to improve, you know, so it will be forgotten about and maybe remembered at the next audit. So it's it's actually following through on all those actions that you've identified. So I've actually put some inspection quotes of some recent inspections that we found, because as I mentioned earlier, there was a lack of subject knowledge and or competence around, you know, these audits. And these are directly from inspection reports. So quality assurance systems in place were not operating effectively. The infection prevention and control audit did not reflect our findings. Radiography, dental care records, and antimicrobial prescribing audits were not being completed. 
Another one was the audit stated use of two sinks, but there was only one sink that was used for cleaning and rinsing of instruments. And lastly, the infection prevention and control audit did not reflect our findings on the inspection day. So frequently this does happen. I, we've been to practices where it will, they won't have a washer disinfector in their practice, but their infection control audit has marked down that yes, they have everything they need for you know, their washer disinfector. So it's those types of items that you need to just make sure that you're completing all throughout and thoroughly reading what you're trying to complete. So that quality assurance workflow that I mentioned earlier. So how do you complete an audit? So you're gonna set your standards so reviewing your procedures and policies annually. If you have a compliance management software, for example, like iComply, you know, you know that the bulk of your policies and procedures are there for you. All you need to do is adapt them to your practice. So you're going to set those standards. Afterwards, you're going to need to communicate that with your team because how can anyone know about your practice's standards if you don't communicate them? So train the team have your practice meetings, chat through them, and have regular practice meetings as well. Because to be honest with you, if you told me you know, to read a policy and procedure, I might not necessarily remember it two years down the line. So it's really important to have these refreshers on top of that. Um, reviewing with your audits. So once you've set your standards, you've trained your team on how to carry those out, you then go ahead and review with the audits. You're gonna go around your practice, you're gonna audit and making sure that those standards are being met. And lastly, you're going to improve it with follow-up action. So anything that's not being met, you're going to think, why? Why hasn't that been met? What can we do in order to prevent this from happening again? What action can we put in place to make the practice better? So remember, inspectors aren't looking for perfect audits, to be honest with you. You know, if anything, they'll be like, hmm, you know, something's amiss here. So don't be worried if there are things on your audit that you know, you've identified because it's all about a learning process and improving your practice. And of course, don't forget to communicate with your team following the audits about anything that you may have realized. So for example, let's just say that you realized um, actually your data loggers for your autoclaves, they haven't been collecting the necessary data from them. So you've identified that, you've put an action in place, and then you communicated with the team. So for example, actually, you know what? Um, your team, the nurses are gonna have to go ahead and download the data on a daily basis just to make sure that you know the data is actually being downloaded. All right, so how can you successfully audit? So data creation, logging, writing clinical records. So you know those decon checklists that you have, or maybe your surgery checklists, the, uh, when you're doing a radiograph quality audit, you know, the clinicians will write into the notes just about the x-ray, the justification as to why they've taken it. So that sort of data creation. Afterwards, you're going to go ahead and collect that data. So you're going to be basically doing that audit. You're going to be going through and looking to see if anything's amiss. So um, data analysis, so identifying the problems and the trends. So once you've identified anything, you're going to go ahead and see what those issues are and how to implement something in the future. So creating and management of follow-up actions. So fixing and preventing reoccurrence for it, creating your tasks, just remembering to actually go ahead and follow through with it. Um, I'll give you an example. So let's just say for the data creation, um, you have your decon checklists where, you know, you have on there that all of the wrapped sterilized instruments have a date on them as to, you know, their expiry date as to when they need to be reprocessed or used before that. Um, for the data collection, you realize that actually, you know what, I've gone into some of the surgeries and I realize that some of them don't have any dates. So, and then the data analysis, identifying the problem. The problem is that we don't know if it's safe to use these instruments. So what do we need to do? Obviously we need to reprocess them, but also we also need to then discuss with the team as to what's happened in that situation. So we can just basically ask them, you know, what's, what's happening? Shall we create a checklist for you? Or just putting an action plan in place, do you need additional training? So identifying and how to solve that problem at hand. And lastly, again, sharing with the team. So I can't stress that enough. And that's how you can show inspectors that you have a well-ed practice sharing with the team, discussing, being transparent, and having those open conversations with them. And of course, writing down the meeting minutes. So I, I can't stress this enough. If it's not written down, it didn't happen. So it's really important to get those meeting minutes across as well.
so this is a question that I, I get all the time. Which audits should we carry out? So obviously your infection control audit for practices in Wales, you're going to do that for, for through the Welsh Deanery tool. For practices in England, you can use the IPS audit tool as well. Um, if you have a compliance management software, more than likely you'll have some templates that you can create your audits. Or if you have iComply, we have the digital smart audits you can use. There's the x-ray quality audits. Uh, that's just basically where you're checking the quality of each of your x-rays, making sure there's a justification on file, so on and so forth. Your x-ray processes, so checking the equipment, checking to make sure that you have all the necessary servicing, your validation, everything on file. And then your sedation. So for the practices that, are, that do carry out sedation, you need to have a sedation audit just to make sure that you have everything in place. Your disability access audit. So there's a common misconception that just only NHS practices have to do it, so it should be for all practices, whether it's in England or Wales. So your disability access audit. And last but not least, your clinical records audits and antimicrobial audits. So technically, these are option, optional for, for England, so uh, practices in Wales do need to carry out their clinical records audit. But so let me get into just the reasoning behind this. Technically, they are optional. However, inspectors have and will go out to a practice and put it in their inspection report that they have not carried out these audits. Whilst you won't get, you won't fail your inspection because you haven't carried them out, it will be there in your reports. Um, so, for example, there have been instances where, you know, like maybe like the local gazette or, you know, patients, they'll have a look at the reports for practices and they'll judge that patients will judge the practice on that. And they can actually see that, oh, actually, you know what, so-and-so dental practice, they, they haven't completed a clinical record audit. Is that practice safe? So it, it has happened in the past. So uh, as I mentioned, they are optional, but they are strongly recommended, especially with the new CQC strategy coming out. Uh, five steps to successful auditing. Knowing your guidance. So doing that training, you know, your CBD. Um, also, knowing the different pieces of guidance, I actually have a slide after this that'll show you what sort of resources you can use. Um, knowing your procedures, so don't offer just lip service to your policies and your procedures and your practice. Know what's actually in them and making sure that what happens in your policies and procedures are actually happening in your practice. Never assuming. So this one, this one's a bit of a funny one. So you shouldn't assume anything just because, for example, um, you're doing your infection control audit. And what, if you guys remember that question where it says about the nail brushes, like, do you have any nail brushes? And you go, oh, no, nah, definitely not us. And then all of a sudden you go into the decon room and you notice that they're there. So never assume, actually go out and look because you don't know what, what's changed in the meantime. Um, never give the benefit of the doubt. So don't just say, oh yeah, Betty, my nurse, she's wonderful, you know, she completes them all the time. And it might be that, you know, maybe Betty's had an off week or maybe Betty doesn't actually know how to properly complete them. So always check and never give the benefit of the doubt. And lastly, ask, could I prove it? So that's a big one because as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of, you know, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. So how can you prove anything? So make sure everything is written down. You have those action plans, you have that flow. So you have your tasks, you know, what needs to be done, your target dates for them, and the sign off for all the actions. All right, so these are some really good resources to sort of get yourself up to date with all the information and help for you to audit properly in your practice. So the guidance notes for dental practitioners on the safe use of x-ray equipment. This one's really brilliant for your, um, you know, your x-ray auditing for your x-ray processes in your practice. There's also HTML 105 and WHTML 105 for Welsh practices. So this is perfect for using as a resource for your infection control audits. There is the clinical examination and record keeping from CG down to FGDP. This is brilliant for your clinical records audit. And lastly, your antimicrobial prescribing at in dentistry from FGDP or CG Dent. So have a look through these. They have a lot of really good information and it'll be really helpful for you to accurately audit. Digital audits. So depending on if you have a compliance management software that sort of helps you out with these, there are digital audits 
to for you to use. So I think there might be a little pop up just to get some further information about iComply. In iComply, there we have our smart digital audits, which makes because as I mentioned, audits can be a bit scary sometimes. So it just helps to sort of have that extra extra help with things. So our digital smart audits, you'll go through, you'll answer the responses, and if anything does need a, an action, it'll give you some suggested actions because that can also be you know a bit tricky sometimes. Like oh, you know what, actually my autoclave hasn't been logging the data, what do I do in that scenario? So you'll have that information to hand, which makes it quite easy. You'll also get an action report at the end and you can add some notes and create your tasks within iComply. So that way you have all that information to hand. And so this is actually something that I hold really near and dear. Um, iManage, I'm not sure if anyone's you know, heard about iManage, but it is has been really successful and is growing really, really fast. Um, we don't have that many places left for April. So if you do want somebody to do your compliance for you, I suggest getting in touch as soon as possible, because as I mentioned, places are just filling up really, really fast. Um, and we've also, introduced our introductory price, we've extended it until the end of the year. So we can't guarantee that price going forward from April onwards. But what is iManage? So as I mentioned, I hold this really near and dear to my heart just because I deal a lot with iManage. So it is a remote compliance manager. So I'm, I don't know about you guys, but here at Agilia, we love compliance, but I know not everyone does love compliance. So what we do for you is we update your policies and procedures for you every single month. And we sign off all the activities for you. We create that audit trail so inspectors can easily trace back everything for you. Because remember that if it's not written down, it didn't happen, we do that for you, make it nice and easy. We also create a, a monthly report so you know exactly what's happened within that month for your compliance. And then we have a monthly review meeting. So that's where we basically either, you know, hold a practice meeting for you where we host it, or we have a one-to-one, -one. entirely your choice what you'd like. For the monthly one-to-one, -one, we go through that entire report with you. We go through it in detail. We talk about your policies and procedures. We give you feedback on your audits and your risk assessments because we know all the common error prone areas. So we feed all of that back to you and make you a pro. Uh, so we, we give you all of our you know expertise on it. Um, or we host a practice meeting. So whatever topics we deal with that month, we then host the practice meeting tell you all the information for it. So for example, if we're working on safeguarding, we'll talk about who the safeguarding lead is, where your safeguarding flowchart can be found, you know, the whole safeguarding process, you know, if you have a concern, what to do in that scenario. So we go through the entire process with you. Um, iManage members also can go on a weekly compliance club call. So this is just where we host uh, just a weekly meeting for all our practices. And if you have any burning compliance questions or, you know, it's sort of like a safe space, you know, because like-minded individuals, people going through the exact same scenarios as you are on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can just go ahead and chat with everyone there. Um, also, there's a quarterly update webinar. It is an exclusive webinar for just our iManage practices where we sort of talk about hot topics or we, you know, will actually ask practices, what do you want to hear about? What do you want information on? And it's just exclusive for iManage members. We have an annual iManage user day where, you know, you'll get two free tickets to go ahead and meet your iManagers in person, which is absolutely brilliant. And then you have your monthly audit and log feedback. I did touch up on this a little bit earlier, but it's just basically where we review your audits, your risk assessments, your logs, just identify any problems, um, you know, and help you create those action plans for you to deliver and show that you have continuous improvement in your practice. And lastly, you have your three yearly remote assessment. So that's where we do sort of like a mock CQC inspection. And we, we check to make sure that everything's in place for you. So you can rest easy and you know not worry about an inspector coming out to your practice um so i manage members actually report that they're able to catch up on compliance after the pandemic so i myself have worked in a practice during the pandemic and it was absolutely hectic it took ages to sort of get back to some kind of normal 
um, having more family or personal time because, as I mentioned, we love the compliance. We'll do it for you. Um, so you can actually focus on your family or your personal time. We actually have um, one of our managed practices. He's mentioned that he can actually go golfing, which is brilliant. He said he, he wasn't able to go golfing as much as he'd like to. And that's changed with iManage. You can focus on recruitment and HR. So, you know, recruitment, it's its really difficult at the moment. And we know that. So you can actually focus on, you know, your recruitment because that takes a lot of time. Um, focus on your business growth because at the end of the day, a dental practice is a business. So you can sit and focus on growing it, making it as best as it can be. Um, you, you can also support you know, your practice managers and provide a better structure for your business all, all around. And lastly, and most importantly, we can, um, you know, with iManage, we can help improve your health and well-being because you don't have to sit in the stress about compliance. You know, it's being done and it's being done correctly. So 